Bonjour, c'est le Don du Vin. And today, I would like to uh, wish you uh, Merry Christmas because it's going to be Christmas in a few days and a Happy New Year, um, which will come very, very soon in about a week. And um, like I do sometimes, you know, I come back into the cellar and I check the bottles. Uh, yesterday, we empty uh, all of the cellar of the empty bottles. I kept a few. As you can see, there is quite a few around. And I realized that uh, some of them were fake. Unfortunately, we are in a market where there is a lot of fake and my job as a um, quality control director is to actually make sure that we don't get too many fakes. But unfortunately, sometimes I, I don't get to inspect all of the bottle that we actually buy. And sometimes we buy bottles and I'm not necessarily always aware of it. And uh, I discovered a bottle that we bought quite some time ago and I never saw it before. It was actually consumed not a long time ago and I realized that basically it is probably a fake and I'm going to try to show you why. So, of course, it is a Petrus. Petrus is probably one of the most uh, counterfeited bottle of wine in the world. And uh, I take a few examples. There's a few empty bottles here that I will compare together. And there's a f uh, three uh, full bottles here. Uh, the vintage are 1959, 1958, but it's more especially the difference between the label and the bottles that I will show you in this 1961. This is 1961 vintage, and I will show you why I believe that one of them is actually a fake, or maybe two of them. And uh, this is the subject of the video today. So, in this 1959, for example, if we take this 1959, I'll show you the bottle. So in this 1959, perfect label, lovely wine. If you look at the punt, the punt is actually quite deep. And you can realize that there is a, a circle here and there is another circle here. And if you, if you really look, I'm not sure if you can see it well on the camera. I'm trying to actually focus here. If you really look here, you can see that there is a line and the line is actually finished by a, a piece of glass that has been added at the bottom. In the 1950s and early 60s, the industrial, industrial way of making bottles was not uh, fully implemented, I will say. So a lot of wineries actually acquired bottles that were still made in three different parts. One side, two side, and the pond side, which was added at the, at the end. So look carefully here. So you have the pond. The pond is actually, the, the pond has no marking. It is quite deep and uh, you have one side two side and the the bottom ring the bottom that has been added at the end and this is a good sign actually for an old bottle like this because it means that it's a true bottle now if we take a different example we're going to take this bottle of 59 which is sibling of the uh, of the previous one that we just saw uh, as you can see, there is no, uh, there's no, uh, there's a bit of a marking, slightly different. Uh, it from a, it's from a different bottle maker. So the punt is actually quite deep, but not necessarily as deep as the previous one. And there is those, uh, those letter C X. Um, it's okay. It's, uh, it's still actually a genuine bottle of wine. It has no problem with it. And uh, C X is actually on some other bottle of Petrus, so this is not a big problem. Uh, the level is showing you that basically it's uh, it's kind of old as well for this 1959 Petrus, and uh, the bottle has no marking, which is good. And you can see that the punt has the same thing. So you see the, you see the line, the line in the middle here, with some default. There's some default on the line, especially here. And you can see here, you can clearly see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm showing you that well, but. Uh, you can clearly see here that the bottom, the punt, has been added at the end. So there's one side, two side, and the punt has been added at the end. I'll let you have a closer look if you can see. And so this, no problem, this is a genuine bottle. So two 1959 bottles, genuine. And let's take this 1958. It's 1958, the same as the uh, 1959 that we just saw, as the CX mark actually at the bottom, so this is there is no problem with that. Genuine bottles of 1958 Petrus, 
and uh, level is actually quite low as well you know it's like a kind of high shoulder I mean it's not that bad actually for 1958 for a bottle that is that old and uh, the CX mark actually from this uh, same bottle uh, maker and no other markings and once again if we look on the side you can clearly see here that you have two lines so you have the default of the two lines here from the mold and you can see that you have one part two parts and the third part that has been added to it i'm showing that to you as well just to show you the default and the third part that has been added so no problem with those three bottles now let's take a 1961 bottle uh, it's an empty bottle that was consumed quite some time ago so this bottle this bottle is a real bottle as well it's got a co co or yeah co sign at the at the bottom on the punt the punt is actually quite uh, quite deep as well you have the marking of the 75 cl which is good and you have some deposit deposit at the end of the bottle which is good too shows you that it's a real old bottle uh, the label is actually pristine is genuine there's no problem about it and when you look at the marking of the bottle on the side you can see the two lines or the lines I will say with some of the default actually from the mold here just here and you can see like on the other bottle that I just show you you have one side two side and you still have the pond that has been added now let's take this bottle of 1961 this bottle of 1961 is also a genuine bottles no problem with one side two side the default on the line here as uh, the previous bottle the CO marking the punt which is actually quite deep as well where I can put my finger it's quite deep and uh, label is a uh, is genuine too no problem with that so I just showed you the 21959 with the difference in the pond. Basically, you had a, a, a very genuine pond, which is like very deep and old here from one bottle one maker. Uh, one bottle maker. Here you have another pond, which is less deep with the CX mark, uh, which is quite nice as well. That was the 1959. This is the 1958. Oops, I nearly actually break the bottle. This is the 1958, so the 1958 was also a genuine bottle with a, a nice punt, actually quite deep with the CX marking. And now I showed you the 1961 as well with the CO marking. And I'll show you this 1961 also with the CO marking and the punt. So the point that I'm trying to, uh, to make with those five bottles here of pictures is that they all have three things. The punt of the bottle is actually deep and the default of the glass can be seen. And the mold of the glass that has been used to make the bottle, you can see that it's a mold that has been used in three different parts. You have one part here, one part there, and you have the punt that has been added at the bottom. That was the technology actually that you had in the late 50s, beginning of the 60s. The industrial era of the mold, uh, the, the bottle molding and how to make the bottle of Petrus or any other wine, meaning in one piece instead of three pieces or instead of having the pumps added at the end, came only in the late 60s, beginning of the 70s. So it's very important to realize that those are genuine bottles with no problem whatsoever on the bottle, on the markings, on the label. The label is actually uh, is actually uh, good as well. You can even compare actually uh, the, the label between uh, 58 and uh, 59. The difference on the different uh, on the label. You can here see actually the similarity actually on the 61. You can see the the vintage is the same. You can see the. Uh, the, the seal is the same here with the P. Uh, you can see that the marking are the same. So no problem with those labels whatsoever. Those bottles are actually coming from Petrus. They are coming from the property, so they are very genuine. Now, 
the object of my video today is to try to show you that I have a big doubt on those two bottles, especially on this bottle. So going back to my presentation, um, sorry, one of my colleagues actually came, so I had to make a little break in the presentation. What I was trying to say to you is basically that those five bottles are genuine, but I have a big doubt of these two. And uh, I'm gonna try to explain you why. The problem is, as I said, those bottles are genuine. They have uh, no problem with the pumps. The pump is actually quite deep. It's got the good markings to it. And you can see the default on the, on the glass of the bottle. You can see that the, the bottle has been molded actually with three parts, one, two, and three. The mold has been added at the end. As I was saying, in this end of uh, 1950s, early 60s, the technology actually was there, but it was just appearing. And so it was not necessarily conceivable for all of the wineries to uh, have some uh, industrial made bottle. So those are actually made in three parts. They are not industrial, they are made with a mold and they are made in a small scale, I would say. Uh, the industrial bottle are usually um, all together and uh, you cannot see necessarily the default on the on the bottle and the punt is doesn't look actually added the punt is actually a part of the bottle as well on most industrial mold so why i do have a problem with those two bottles first you look at the label when you look at the label you realize that uh, there's a difference of color those are actually clear those were actually bottles that came directly from Petrus and they were labeled uh, quite recently, I will say a few years ago. That's why they appear very pristine and that's why they are bloodly labeled with no damage. Those are actually uh, label that are a bit older and uh, you can see that this one is slightly faded. The color has changed to a slightly pinkish, uh, pinkish hue, I will say. This one is very pristine as well. This one was actually labeled not a long time ago, directly from the winery as well. So those label have no problem whatsoever. This one is a different type of label. I'm gonna show you why and I'm gonna cl close it to the, to the phone. But just to show you, first, the paper doesn't feel the same. When you touch the paper here, here, and even here, and when you touch this paper, the paper doesn't feel the same. So the quality of the paper is very important when you want to define if it's a counterfeit or if it's a real, a real bottle. Here the paper feels a bit weird. Then the second thing which is weird is the, the vintage. The vintage, the printing of the vintage, the, the calligraphy of the vintage, what they use for the fonts, is totally different from the font that you have here. So I agree in the late 50s and early 60s the font was sometimes slightly different depending on the printing depending on the printer uh, and depending on who was making the label and in that case it's even more different because here you have a stamp that stamp that i'm going to show you in a minute that stamp is the Negociant Nicola, Nicola, the, the retail shop, the famous retail shop in France, Nicola, was also the Negociant that was distributing and we um, having Petrus among some of the other products that they distribute at the time. And they were allowed to actually stamp the bottle with the Nicola uh, stamp. And sometimes, because at the times, most of the wine was actually given to the negociant and it was not necessarily labeled. Some of the negociants were actually doing the aging and some of the negociants were doing even the, uh, the labeling and the corking and the, uh, the, and the capsuling. So capsules and labels sometimes were done by the negociant and that's where you have some differences sometimes on the label. So, Let's, let's say that this label is actually genuine from Nicola. I, I don't have another label from Nicola Negociant actually to be able to compare. So I, I'm, let's give it the, the benefit of the doubt. And uh, let's say that the printing and the font of the 1961 here could be genuine actually for Nicola Negociant. 
now let's inspect the bottle. I'm going to close it actually to uh, to the camera. So, what I was talking about, you can see it here, is the 1961 printing, the font of it. The font compared to the 1961 on the other bottle. Like if I if I try to put this bottle together, for example, you see the font. The font is totally different. You have 1961 on one side, which is like the genuine font that they use normally on the bottle of Petrus. And you have this uh, gothic type of font, uh, 1961, on the Magnum. And uh, that, to me, is uh, a bit fishy. But, as I said, I do not have a bottle of uh, Nicola, uh, Nicola Reserve uh, Negociant label to... Uh, to compare it with so let's say it's gonna it's a genuine thing so now let's inspect the bottles as we inspect the other bottles you can see that there is one part two parts you can see some default of the within the glass there is some default actually within the next to the line actually because of the mold which is a good sign because it's a 1961 you can see actually that the uh, the, the sign this one uh, must be decanted and uh, this is a, also a good label that was made at this point there's a, a lot of different defaults uh, on the uh, on the bottle you can see you can see one here so now the most important thing is, is even if the font if even if the uh, even if the bottom uh, of the pumps looks slightly different actually from the uh, 1959, 1958 and other bottle of 1961 you still have the, the CO sign uh, which is a good sign because it means that it's basically the same bottle maker that made actually this Magnum as it made actually the uh, 750 uh, milliliters bottle so it's a good sign to me it's uh, it genuine uh, the font is actually quite deep as well so which is good too and uh, even if you do have those uh, those marks, those are the marks from the mold that has been used. You can still see that, and especially here, I don't know if you can see it well. I'm gonna try to show you. You can see it here that the 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 bottom part has been added to it. So you have like three parts: one, two, three. So to me, even if the label actually looks a bit fishy because of the because of the font of the vintage and because of uh, maybe some other uh, some other sign on the label that uh, telling me that maybe maybe there is something a bit fishy about it. It seems that the bottle is not fishy at all. It seems that the bottle is genuine and it seems that it's uh, that it's good. Uh, bottle maker is good as well. The sign on the bottle and the markings on the bottle are good as well. So. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt, and I'm gonna say that basically this bottle is genuine, and this is a this is a good bottle of a Petrus, but it has a slightly different font on the uh, on the vintage, and it has the stamp of the Nicola, which is not a problem, which is not a big deal because Nicola used to distribute this uh, bottle of Petrus and used to even take care of the aging and the uh, and the um, labeling and the capsuling, as I was saying. So, but. I will say that when you look for counterfeit, this is always, always something that you look for. The color, the texture, the texture of the label, the overall color of the label, the font that has been used and the color of the font, the type of font you see here, the, the, the font is actually quite clean, like a, like a Verdana or uh, those type of clean fonts. And here it's more like a gothic type of font. So this could be an indication of something fishy, something which is not genuine for this type of bottle. But now, and to end this video, what I would like to do is to concentrate on the default that I can see in that very particular bottle. And uh, if one day the people of Petrus uh, are looking at this video, if they could actually tell me maybe if this one is actually a genuine or if this one is a fake and if I'm right or if I'm wrong. I believe personally that it's a fake and I'm going to show you why, but uh, I may be wrong. Although uh, so far in my 28 years career where I see so many fakes and so many uh, counterfeits bottle, I, I've been really wrong. So I'm going to close it up actually to, uh, to the camera to show you the, 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 the different thing. First the feel of the paper is totally different between this paper and this paper and this paper and this paper and this paper the feel is totally different this is drier it's got more uh, rough edge to it 
and uh, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel as uh, it feels a bit thicker as well. What those one are a bit thinner. This is more refined. I will say this is a bit thicker. It, it looks like the paper is not the right paper that has been used. Actually, for example, on that bottle or that bottle, or even this bottle. If you look at the label, the label is actually quite yellow. So this could be a problem that can happen actually when the bottle has been left too long under the light. The light actually tend to either fade the label or either actually uh, giving that kind of yellow uh, yellow appearance when it's too much under the light. So that's why we always say that the wine should be kept in the dark. But not only the paper doesn't feel right and feel thicker, you know, it's it, it feels really thick and uh, I even when I do this, when I try to see the thickness actually here on the label, and when I try to do this, it really feels thick. So for me, this is fishy, this is not genuine because of the texture of the paper and the thickness of the paper. That's one thing. The color may not be too much of a problem, but when you see how the the the, the how the the, uh, the color has faded on those labels, or even how the, the, the slightly pinkish hue that you can have in this one and this one and you don't have it in this one that makes me feel a bit weird because I'm like why is this one so yellow and what happened to that label for that label to be so yellow this is a, 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 a big problem to me now there is something else as well that I found very fishy we were talking about the font the gothic font of the vintage on this bottle now I'm going to talk about the font of this bottle it's very very different from the font that is used here 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 or even here it's it's totally different it's larger it feels thicker and it feels like a totally different font which is not used normally on the bottle of Petrus so this is a big problem to me as well now if you look at the label itself it doesn't have the P so I'm not saying that the P must appear on every single bottle of Petrus because it's not necessarily true but we have example here of 1961 label where the P is there and the P is not there, it is missing. So this is another thing that is fishy. So that's the, la the label texture, the label thickness, the label color, the font of the vintage, the P that is not appearing, the seal, the, the, the Petrus seal that is not appearing and the marking, the marking of the ownership by uh, Madame Von Luba, which is not necessarily actually put at the same position as the other one. And uh, to me, I think there is a problem with the bottle as well. First, because the glass is much lighter than this one or this one or this one or this one. So. Petrus, despite the fact that there is quite a lot of fake, Petrus is usually quite consistent. And uh, in terms of the color of the glass, if that was, for example, in the mid 40s during the war, during World War II, where uh, glass was difficult to find, I could believe that basically they couldn't find the same type of glass color and they may have used a different color. But we are on the vintage 1961 in the 60s glass was not necessarily a problem and glass was not necessarily as light as this and you can see that you can you can compare you can see that the the darkness of this glass compared to the greenness and the lightness of this glass this one is deeper and is darker this one is actually lighter and is greener as well and uh it doesn't feel right. I mean, when you put when you put both magnums to be together, and when you put the 61 together, you can see you can see that the you can see that the the, the color the color of actually the uh, the that has been used for those bottles is totally different. I need to admit that this one, if you compare both 750s, this one is slightly lighter than this one. So it could be possible that. The lightness of this one may not be necessarily an indication of being a counterfeit, but I still found that quite fishy because it's, this one is still lighter but it's still dark. This one is dark, this one is dark as well, but this one is really really light. You can see it when I actually put uh, something clear in the back, in the background, you can see, you can see the difference. I don't know if you can clearly see it, but 
you can see the difference in the you see the difference here between the darkness of this darkness of this this is slightly lighter i need to admit but this is still a dark type of a uh, type of glass while this is actually green and light and uh, much much lighter in color than this one which is much darker so this is fishy to me so if we want to recap and i will i will show you the label actually and we'll close up in the camera very soon to end this video but if we want to recap uh when you look for counterfeit and especially with petrus look for the texture of the label the color of the label the font that has been used the color of the font the, the color of the, the lettering and the markings and the writings the, the seal as well and you can see all of those defaults in that particular bottle that's why i'm thinking that this bottle is a fake you can see the, the difference of texture, you can see the difference of color, you can see the difference of fonts, even the, the color of the, the red color of the, the Petrus is not the same as this one or this one. Same here, the red is not the same as this one or this one. There's no seal that is here. The paper feels thicker, the glass is lighter in color and is greener as well. And now, this is why I'm gonna close up the bottle to you when you compare when you compare those uh, those pots as I was saying the pots here and here have the markings that are correct markings when you look here and I'm going to close up the, the, the bottle to you now look at the label so we look at the label together so think about everything i just said the texture the color the font the color of the lettering everything is wrong there's a lot of things that are wrong even the seal is not there even some of the details that you have some of the leaves some of the details are not the same and are wrong even the number of uh, of little uh, grapes here and here is it feels wrong but when you look here and this is actually where i think it is wrong too the markings on the bottle are different and the punt have this more markings that are more industrial that you can see here those type of markings appear more i will say in the middle of the 60s late 60s and early 70s in the mold there were no mold like this with those kind of markings at the time to do Petrus. And I doubt that uh, the bottling of Petrus 1961 went through so many different bottle makers. So that's why, and that is the goal of this uh, video today, that's why I really believe that this bottle is fake for all of the reasons that I gave you. And I'm gonna re recap them. So the clearness of the glass, the pont that is not correct, the marking on the pont, the marking on the pont with the mold that has been used for it, uh, even even the even the, the the bottle actually, even if the if the bottle actually presents some of the defaults, I really do believe that it's not necessarily uh, a very good bottle because it feels it doesn't feel that the pont has been added the same way as on the other bottle. It feels totally different. So clearness of the glass, color of the label, thickness of the label, font of the vintage, color of the name, color of that other name. Everything to me feels like it's basically a fake. So I'll let you have a look. One last look at this bottle. One last look at the font. Even the marking and the SS is actually different here. So, as always, I'm doing a back and forth actually to the camera because I'm alone actually making this movie. Uh, so this was just a presentation on Petrus, and Petrus is uh, probably uh, one of my favorite wine in the world. And uh, we have a lot of uh, bottle of Petrus actually within our cellar. And my job as a wine quality uh, control director is to actually inspect the bottle the way I just did with you on this video and try to make sure that we don't get any counterfeit. Unfortunately, 
this bottle was actually bought prior my time and I didn't get the chance actually to inspect it. If I had the chance to inspect it when we actually bought it, I would have, I would have refused this bottle or I would have sent a picture to the chateau to ask them whether they feel that it's a genuine bottle or not. Now comparing all of those labels, I just demonstrate that basically this bottle is surely a fake and uh, I wasn't there when it was consumed so I, I do not know if it tasted right or if it tasted wrong or if it was off or if it was good or not. I hope it was good at least because uh, 1961 Magnum is a very expensive bottle of wine. Unfortunately, there is a lot of fake on the market, a lot of fake of Petrus in the market. So I cannot stress enough the fact that you have to be very, very, very careful about the provenance and how to authentify this bottle of Petrus. There's a lot of fake on the market. If the bottle are not coming directly from the property or from a trusted negotiant or wine merchant, then do not buy it because you don't know where the bottle is from. We probably actually bought this bottle in an auction or we probably actually bought it from a private merchant somewhere a long time ago, about like 10 or 11 years ago. And I wasn't there at this time actually working in this company, but I wish I could have been there actually to spot basically this bottle and really ask the winery uh, if, it was a, if it was a good one or if it was a fake one. Voila. So this was Le Dom Divin. This was to once again try to educate you on how to define counterfeit and fake bottles, especially on Petrus. Petrus is the example that I take the most, uh, the most of the time because this is where I can see that there is the most fake bottle around the market. We are in Hong Kong, we are next to China, and there's a lot of fakes in China. So. On those words, I'm going to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I should make more videos actually in 2020 and I hope, uh, hope that everything's going to be okay. I hope you're going to be with your friend and family surrounded uh, by the people you love to uh, celebrate this end of the year festivities and holiday season and I uh, hope that um, you will watch some of my video of 2020s and that you will read some of my posts on my blog. I have a new blog actually. Uh, which is called Really the Adventure of the Coteo Stick Stickman. I uh, will uh, talk to you about it another day. But, uh, voila, I hope you enjoy those videos. I hope you enjoy actually to see uh, uh, the details that I'm trying to, uh, to, 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 to make in those videos and uh, the detail to, to, to which extent. I'm not, I'm not giving you, I will say, all of the details because it, it will be uh, against against what I do and it will be giving the opportunity to people to be able to make better counterfeit bottles. So I'm not giving you all of the details of what I can see, I'm giving you the main details. It's important for me actually, like it's important for most of the professional of all of the wine uh, quality control like me to uh, keep some of our secrets because otherwise if we reveal our secrets people actually will know how to make better fake and better counterfeit and so we will have more and more difficulty to actually uh, prevent from the fake and counterfeit bottles to enter into our cellar so because of that reason i only gave you actually a few points main points i would say and i uh, hope you enjoy them and uh, i describe already all of those points in some of my blog i will do a specific blog on that specific video of today and uh, Hope you enjoy it and I see you next time. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year 2020. All the best and uh, you know, wish you health, happiness and uh, joy in your family and with your friend. Bye bye, that was Ladom Divan, à bientôt.